daughter, who's now 20 months, was sick this weekend. So uh, she didn't understand that I had a, a storytelling night to do. So I, it doesn't matter how many times I explain it to her, she still doesn't understand it. So I want to talk to you about uh, the happiest day of my life. And that's when my daughter, Betsy, was born. And uh, let me just undo this for a second. I guess this is the best I can do with this. I feel like I have a crutch or something. Right? I do. Um, so uh, Betsy and I, uh, I'm her dad now. But uh, I think that's what it is. And I'm, 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 it's very hard to even be, cons to think that I'm a, a father to, to Betsy. Because before she was born, I was like, I don't want her to get certain things that, I don't want her to get certain things of mine. Like, I don't want her to have my looks. I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? And uh, I don't want her to have my posture. Again, self-explanatory. And I don't want her to get my negative, my negativity. And because uh, I'm very doom and gloom kind of person. So the big day came and we were in the, in the operating room, Lauren and myself. And Lauren is, um, she's passed out because she's had a C-section. Um, now, if, if you don't know what a C-section is, what, I'm, I'm sure most people do. It's uh, <laughs> just the right audience for it. Um, <laughs> They, the baby doesn't come out vaginally. It's not a natural childbirth. The doctor goes and they cut the mother's stomach and they take the baby out that way. Now, when that happens, everybody is pissed off. The mother's pissed off because it's a major surgery and she's now gonna have a scar. The baby's pissed off because she doesn't get to go down the water slide. And the, the dad is really pissed off because he doesn't trust the doctors and think they're just doing it for the money. So, Lauren is laying on the operating table, and they put a, a uh, curtain, a blue curtain. So I can't see anything that's going on on the other side. I hear a suction machine. I hear the doctors and nurses talking to each other, and they're talking very casually, like they're out to lunch at Chili's. You think you're going to have a, should we order a dessert? You want to split a dessert? No, I, I don't think we have time. Oh, okay. And then... About 20 minutes later, I start to hear this. Wah, wah, wah. And I'm assuming I can't see anything that it's probably our baby. A couple moments later, the nurse comes around the curtain and she is holding the baby. This baby that we have spent a couple thousand dollars on fertility treatments, a couple years wanting really badly, and she's holding it up. And it's the first time that I'm seeing it. And I want to tell you something. It was ugly. <laughs> now, I had no idea how ugly newborn babies are. And Lauren, my wife, gives me shit about this when I say, I, I don't know, I didn't know that the baby was going to come out ugly. And she, said, and she always gets annoyed at me. She goes, did you learn anything in sex ed? And I'm like, no, I didn't learn anything in sex ed. I was laughing when Mr. Bogan would say penis and vagina. That's all I learned. I mean, I went to baby school. We went to baby school. They should have helped me back. I don't get it, right? How ugly this baby was. I mean, it was really, really ugly. I mean, it looked like it wasn't done. Like if I was in a restaurant, right, I would have sent it back because it, was, it wasn't done. It wasn't cooked. And, they're, and, and it's scary. They're scary. They're, they're like little creatures. They're slimy little creatures with greasy head and squinty eyes. I mean, it looked like it crawled out of a toilet. If I went into a gas station and I opened the stall door and there was a baby sitting in the toilet, I'd say, you know what? That makes sense. And they got these, these, these shrunken heads, and they look like cranky old men, and, and my child looked like Bernie Sanders. Now, I love his politics, but I don't want my child to look like Bernie Sanders. And the nurse wraps it around in a, in a, in a, in a tiny blanket, and it just looks like a creepy burrito. <laughs> And so the nurse says to me, um, do you want to hold the baby? 
Me? Yes, do you want to hold the baby? You're the father. And I don't want to say yes, because if I say yes, I'm going to have to bring it home. And this isn't like I went to Best Buy and got the wrong flat screen TV and I'll have to pay a $50 restocking fee to get a new one. There is no returning policy for this. And I don't know what to do, because I don't want to be a bad parent, right? I don't want my child to, to blame me for having a <laughs> shitty childhood because I didn't want to take him, you know, didn't want to hold him, hold her. So I say, yes, I'll, I'll, hold, I'll hold the baby. And this was supposed to be the happiest day of my life. All the fathers told me this would be the happiest day of my life. I was going to be filled with joy. All the fear that I had would go away once that baby came out. And all I can see is when I look down at her is I feel depressed. I feel depressed. And so the nurse says to me, we want to get a picture. <laughs> And I don't smile because I don't do it well. And if you've ever seen me p taking pictures, when I take a picture, it, it's, um, it, it's, when I smile, it's like I'm in pain. It's like I got up in the morning and I stepped on a, a Lego with my bare feet. But I say yes. I say yes because that's what fathers are supposed to do, I guess, right? And so we do that. We take that picture. And... Um, Then I decide um, they um, do something that I've never seen before. They take the baby's fingerprints and then they put a, a little bracelet like it's house arrest. <laughs> now my dad was a criminal and so he was a white collar criminal so I kind of feel more bonded to my child. <laughs> and then she says something to me, she says, do you want to bring it up to the nursery? You can bring your daughter up to the nursery. And I said, uh, sure, I'll do that, which was a huge mistake. Because when I got up there, there was all these babies, like newborn babies, um, maybe a couple days old, and they were blonde and blue-eyed, and they were smiling, and they were happy. They looked like they were auditioning for a Huggies commercial. <laughs> And I wanted one of those babies. I wanted to trade my baby in for one of those babies. Even though genetically it was impossible, right? I wanted one of those babies. And I felt terrible as a father, right? 20 minutes into fatherhood, I'm already comparing my baby to another baby, wishing I had a different baby. It's sad, really. And this was supposed to be the happiest day of my life. And I was doing a great job of ruining it. And I'm going to get real for just a second. I know a lot of you parents out there, you don't want to admit when your baby came out that they were ugly. And I totally get it. We're on the same side now. We're playing for the same team here. I'm a parent too, believe it or not. And I get why you don't want to do it. Because if you say that, people are going to think you're a bad parent. But the reason I'm admitting it, it's not for myself, you know? This is, I don't come up here, this isn't therapy. I go to therapy twice a week, I get plenty of therapy. <laughs> I'm doing this for my daughter. Yeah, I'm doing it for my daughter. Because I want her to realize the importance of being honest. Now they tape these. They tape them, taping this story right now. And it's gonna be on the YouTube. And uh, hopefully, my daughter will get to watch this. And Betsy, if you're watching this, this is your dad, and your dad wants to just tell you something. Betsy, when you were born, you were really, really ugly. All babies are really, really ugly. But today, Betsy, you're beautiful. Thank you.